morning, everyone. A group of former students gathered to honor a retiring university professor. And many of them, these students, became very successful executives here in the Silicon Valley with incomes that were literally out of this world. But a reunion like this, you would expect there to be celebrating, right? But that's not the way it was. It was quite the opposite. These young executives were grumpy, just like most of the people in Silicon Valley anyways, and they were complaining, no offense. <laughs> um, one of them complained, he said, I'm a CEO of a company and my staff is in incompetent. Another one said, I'm so stressed out, I was my boss's favorite, but he won't even give me a raise. Another complained, I have all the money in the world, anything I want I could buy, and now I'm given a diagnosis of an illness and I can't even buy good health. Complaining, complaining, complaining. And after hearing all of this, the professor got up to prepare a pot of coffee. And he came out and he placed on the table all kinds of coffee mugs, beautiful mugs, exquisite ones, crystal, bone china, and also paper cups and plastic cups and the like. And he invited everyone, help yourself to a cup of coffee. Well, once everybody had the mug in hand, he said to them, Take a look at what you're holding. Take a look at the mug that you have in your hand. They all looked down and he said, notice that every single one of you took the nice expensive cups. Not one of you even dared to touch the paper cups. Once they were a little puzzled, he continued, all you wanted was coffee, yes? But yet you were so preoccupied with having the fanciest cup a cup adds no quality to the coffee inside, yet you want the fanciest. Then he said to them, now do you see why your lives are so miserable? Do you get it? <laughs> so, <laughs> We're all fixated on the externals of life. By the way, someone said they didn't understand it yesterday, and then after Mass they said, Father, I finally understood it. They were so miserable because they drank too much caffeine. <laughs> no. We're so caught up with the externals of life. And as a young millennial, I could say that. We are. <clears throat> Jobs, reputation, security money. They're all good things, but they're only the cup. They're only the container, the outside of life. And when we focus on those things, it makes us crazy. It makes us sick. The American mentality says, you want to be happy? Do it your way. Do whatever you want. Do it my way. Saint, for, for Saint, not a saint, Frank Sinatra said, do it my way. But life doesn't work that way. Here again, the words of St. Paul. St. Paul said, I have been crucified with Christ, yet I live. No longer I, but Christ lives in me. You see, no cup, no container can ever satisfy or make us happy. What makes us happy more than anything is that our cup, our lives, are filled with the right drink. And who is that? It's Jesus Christ. And so that's why he said, I have been crucified with Christ, yet I live. No longer I, but Christ lives in me. My message to you today, this Sunday, is very simple. You can't make happiness for yourself. Happiness only comes from a deep and loving relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen? It only comes from loving Jesus, period. And that's what the woman in the gospel came to powerfully e experience. I've always wondered who the woman in the gospel is. Some say she was a prostitute, but if she was a prostitute, she wouldn't have even been in that house in the first place. All we know is that she was sinful, and everybody in town knew it. The lady in the gospel, she was one of those 
women of the world. She was a cosmopolitan girl. She was one of those people you see on the billboards in their bustier or whatever, you know? She, she was sort of like the Katy Perry of the time. Do you know who Katy Perry is? If you don't know, your lives are better for not knowing. Anyways. <laughs> The girl in the gospel, she was a Hicktown girl gone bad. She was a girl who rebelled to live life her way to live life in the fast lane. This young lady abandoned the faith of her parents, her childhood, because it held her back. Because going to church or doing your faith, it's boring, right? Thank you. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Tell some of the older teenagers that, will ya? All right. <laughs> and so when the girl had the chance, she left home to hang out with the cool kids, to do things in the trendy circles in the big city. She was allured by a life without God, without responsibility. But in its wake, it left her anything but happy. She was sad, angry, alone. But in walks Jesus, and everything changed. In an instant, Jesus put meaning into her life. It's all she ever wanted. And that's why she was crying. She had enough tears to wash Jesus' feet. Why did she cry? Because when you feel Jesus, when you know him, when you know that he sets you free, it's pretty darn overwhelming. I better cry was this. I have been crucified with Christ, yet I live no longer I but Christ lives in me. And if it was true for her, thus shall it be for us too. We can't live life alone. We can't live life by doing what we want or doing it our way. We need Jesus. We need him. And so when you come here to the altar in a few minutes, come to him like that repentant woman. Love him. Cry out to him. Tell Jesus, I need you more than anything. Because, my friends, Jesus is God. And he will truly take care of you. He will truly set us free. Now, whenever we preach on homilies like this, people think like, oh, well, I have money and reputation. Does that mean I'm bad? Well, no, it doesn't. Not, not, not at all. There are many saints who are very rich, but our accomplishments have to be rooted in, on solid rock. And I want to talk about now, uh, tell you a little personal story. I talked at the beginning about cups, but now I want to tell you about chalices. Do you know what a chalice is? A chalice is the gold cups that we use on the altar. Well, at my ordination, I received a beautiful chalice from my family here. And artistically, this chalice is very, very beautiful. It's 12 inches tall. It's made of sterling silver. It's from Italy. It has images of Jesus. And it has a diamond inside of it that was, belonged to my grandfather who passed away. But what makes this so precious is not the way it looks on the outside, but because of what it has on the inside, the blood of Christ. And when I was ordained, I had the bishop bless it. And I'll never forget the words the bishop said to me when he was examining my chalice. He said, your life must be as beautiful as this chalice. Not because of what you do, but because of the God who dwells in you. Do you get it? because of the God who dwells in us. All that we have, all that we are, all that we have accomplished are great things, but they only make sense if they reflect the beauty within us, that is, the God who dwells in us. Amen.